Hey, it's Dr. Cody Raw with Tech for Psych. Today we have a Psychiatry Innovation Lab finalist pitch from Dr. Mohammed Irfan. He's an MD, PhD, and head of the mental health department at the Peshawar Medical College in Pakistan. Now there's a massive shortage of psychiatrists in Pakistan. And what Dr. Irfan's proposing is something called Hope Assist, which would be a smartphone-based application to assess general practitioners in making correct mental health diagnoses of their patients and referring them for proper treatment. For Hope Assist, Dr. Irfan took home the Human Rights Award for $1,000. Alan Sachs, who said, and I quote, I wish that the humanity that we all share is more important than the mental illness that we may not share. And I share this idea, I share her wish by presenting to you this innovative idea on behalf of my colleagues with the name Hope Assist, which is supposed to help physicians deliver quality care. And when I'm talking about physicians, I'm talking about primary care physicians. To where, so wherever I mention physicians or GPs in terms of Pakistani context, consider primary care physicians. So I'm here because of these facts. These are the facts that we deal globally. And the stats from the United States of America are no different. If you can see this, one out of every four individuals is suffering from a mental illness. And when we are talking about this number, we are talking about 193 billion USD per year that is spent. And we are talking about this, we are talking about 800,000 suicides that are taking place in one year's time. So why not make mental health a priority? That is what we believe. So if we believe that mental health is a priority, so although I'm talking about mental illness as a whole, but this time as a pilot, I'm talking about depression. Depression, which affects 350 million people around the globe. Leading cause of disability just declared last month uh, Previously, it was considered that in 2020 it will be leading cause. Now it is considered the leading cause of disability. And in the Pakistani context, I would say the 30% prevalence in urban Pakistan makes it one of the biggest problems. Now, when we see this problem statement, we also know that Pakistan has a population of 180 million people and growing. And the resources, the human resources that we are referring to, are limited to only 400 practicing psychiatrists and almost 500 practicing clinical psychologists. So this is the number that we are talking about. And there is a huge gap which is filled by primary care physicians. The gap is big. There is a need, but the filling part is not done by the mental health professionals, but the primary care physicians. But they receive very less mental health training, only 16% of them. And second, they're important because people do visit to them, one, because of the gap, and two, because of stigma associated with mental illness. So if we see that, people go to them, they're available, but mental health care quality is not that good. When we think of that, we need to have a solution. But we need to keep it simple. And we need to keep it simple by making the solution in terms of smartphone-based decision support system using the WHO mental health guidelines to facilitate physicians in making appropriate diagnosis and treatment choices. Now, when we're talking about that, we have to think of the ground facilities available in Pakistan. And these numbers show it all. And I'm going to forward to look for the intervention, which is three part, one, two, and three. The second thing, the clinic workflow, patient comes to clinic, waits for turn, seen by physician, blah, blah, blah. And this all goes, patient has the number with the GP, receives a call from Hope Assist, answers the questions, receives results in the app, reviews treatment, and decides on final treatment and follow-up. So this is all about the clinic workflow, and I'm going fast because of the time limitation. This is the interface design that is going to be there for this app. We are going to think of the te technical development in terms of all of the areas that are needed in terms of development. And the implementation plan for the pilot project that is going to take place in eight months time is all about that. Well, we feel 
that the implementation plan is going to work on the business model that we need a win-win situation, especially for GPs who have a strong interest in patient retention, but they also need to have a good reputation and future business value. And we feel that teaching, training, and research are the way to go forward. In this way, we feel that the impact and benefit in terms of just this pilot is giving 5,500 people benefit from Hope Assist. And if this is scaled up to almost 1,000 general practitioners, primary care physicians, half a million people can get the impact from this. So we feel that monitoring evaluation can be done on all levels to go with the research. And we need to avoid the symptoms of healthcare debate. We are not going into details of the pre-waiting room sessions. And we are not in the mood to cut the cost and shift our system elsewhere. And we just feel that this has the power to revolutionize the healthcare perspective in terms of the fact that someone said, and I quote in the end, that to live for 100 years, you don't need to be alive for 100 years. One good deed can make you live forever in the hearts. And I say this because this can revolutionize not only the mental health care, but the health care overall, because there's no health without mental health. Thank you very much. So um, I, I think that was a really wonderful and very passionate um, presentation. And I think you're raising, obviously, an important point that we've all been talking about, which is how you treat within primary care, because that's where patients are. And, and you raised the you raise the issue of, on the global stage that it's even more difficult. So the idea of trying to come up with efficiencies is really a good idea. My question to you, though, is, um, you know, notoriously doctors are not great at doing things like this and following evidence-based guidelines. Why do you think that that will happen in Pakistan? Why will they use this? Right. One, I, I've already shown in my slide that the back home principle is that things go by the word of mouth. And the patient retention is when the patient gets better. So we are selling it that this will help in getting the patient better. You will retain the patient and your business flow will increase. So we are selling that this is an assistance to you. You already see a patient. You already have your clinical practice. But this is an assistance to you. This will give you something more in terms of investigation, management, and diagnosis. And this will give you an idea how to go forward. And, and has this, this kind of model been used in other disease states? Not exactly to my knowledge at the moment, but I, I believe and I am proposing that once it is used here, it can be used everywhere. How do you see this model beyond the screening actually address the stigma issue that you raised and actually the treatment side as it relates to what you do after the screening? Wonderful. First, uh, the important thing about stigma is to reach to someone who can deal with the issues that you're having. I believe that going to a PCP is easier and has no stigma associated to it because by the time you go there, you don't know probably that you're suffering from a mental illness. So you're going to a PCP to deal with anything. That could be just body aches, that somatic symptoms, which are very common there. So one we think that is the connection that is developed in the very first beginning. Once the connection is developed, then you may address it in many ways. You don't need to tell them that you are suffering from major depressive illness. But there are many colloquial terms that you can use and just you can guide them and you can educate them. And this education will set the first standard to go forward. Thank you very much. I, I think a, a couple of things that I, I'd like you to think about. One is, you said 16% of GPs receive some mental health training. So it, it would be helpful to know if GPs actually want this, right? Because if they don't want this, then you're going to have a really hard time with this approach, right? But, I, but at the same time, I really like this idea of um, expanding sort of the, 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 the staffing pool, the, the pool of clinicians and people who can help, right? And that's a model that we've actually seen a lot of change in. And so I w also would encourage you to think beyond GPs. And are there others out there where you've already got demand for the kind of support you're offering? Because if, if you don't have to create the demand, if you just have to respond to it, I think it'll be more successful. So it'd be helpful to have you think about that. 
Wonderful, wonderful. I, I totally agree to the part two. Part one, GP will want it or not. GP want the clinic running. GP want the practice going. I'm, I'm, I've just shown you 30% prevalence of depression. There are other illnesses as well. There are other comorbid conditions as well. They want their practice going. If they want that, they need to know and need to go forward. Yeah. Please, Thank sir. you. Yeah. With, with your presentation, real quick, um, you should spend more time on your solution mm. and less time on the problem. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Audience Thank you. questions. <clears throat> Why not just work toward educating and training GPs on a global scale on behavioral health instead of introducing new technology to their clinical workers? Have you tested it on PCPs or GPs yet? Right. The first part. And you have 12 seconds. All right. <laughs> the first part is that getting GPs to get training at this level will always be difficult unless it is introduced at the medical school levels. And at medical school levels in many places, the training does not exist. So I personally feel that we have to go a step beyond, be behind to address this. Second, it is in, okay, in a demo. <laughs>